another one about healing. This is energy healing. And this is Merlin, who uh, ancient Celts uh, were the ones that interacted with Merlin. And he is said to have floated the stones into place for, uh, for Stonehenge. So a great magician, a great, uh, which um, if anyone's not familiar, what I mean by magic is focusing your intentional energy to create a desired outcome to manifest something, which, um, you know, that, that isn't well understood by mainstream science, which is why it's called magic. But it's something that we all do. Um, wishing for something is sort of how we first experience it. But then it's um, not just wishing, but, you know, when we sit, when we meditate, when we set our intentions, it's planting the seeds in the subconscious. And then the rest is just ritual. You know, you can use herbs or stones or runes, you know, whatever type of uh, external manifestation of it that you want, but that's what it is. That's this, uh, in this case, energy healing, focusing your energy. It's either to achieve something in your body, mind, or in your life around you. But when you do it for yourself from within, then you're ready, you're open and receptive to the opportunities all around. Um, one of the fundamental characteristics of this is like the three minds, the three modes of the mind that we talk about in Kundalini, positive mind, negative mind, and neutral mind. So negative mind automatically engages first. It's to protect us. We know we're presented with something and we say, I'm not sure about that. You know, there could be a healthy, natural type of fear trying to protect us, but it's not to be stuck in that. It's to shift beyond that into positive mind and say, you know, what could be the benefits? Everything has pros and cons. And then you go to neutral mind or meditative mind. And, and then you're able to say, this is, you know, what I should do. Um, not out of judgment, just out of uh, intuition, I might say, uh, a neutral space. Like, even if it's something hard, even if it's something that might hurt, sometimes we still have to do it. Um, example I give a lot of times is when you go to the dentist and we sit there and it is not comfortable, it might hurt, but you trust in that process and you know it's necessary you know it's going to have a positive outcome afterwards and sometimes life is like that so that's getting beyond negative mind to neutral mind all right sounds good then uh, let's do madeline here um so we're going to work on shoulders low back anything bothering you holidays are really stressful for a lot of people um, <laughs> with the cold and dark. <laughs> right. I'm very pleased that we're um, waxing up again, you know, longer days, more light. And, um, but yeah, breath initially is the key to shifting the nervous system. So you can already start a little um, conscious breathing, just letting the, your belly expand when you inhale to get a little deeper, longer breath. I like to do those sigh breaths where you sigh out. And immediately you can feel you start to bring the stress levels down, you start to slow things down. And uh, we'll get more into that in a moment. But would you like uh, an Ascended Masters or a Rumi? That's more of that crimson which they use for or love and devotion and sacred phoenix heart. Yeah, she looks like she's just engulfed in flames. Of course, uh, we all know the, the phoenix uh, sort of symbolism of uh, we're burnt up and then we rise again from the ashes. Uh, that uh, mm -hmm. disasters, <laughs> things in life that seem to destroy everything around us and destroy us are actually um, like a forest fire you know when it burns 
and that fertilizes the ground for the new growth. And there's those pine cones that only open up when they're exposed to like hundreds of degrees. Uh, so that is like the negative mind, positive mind, the neutral mm -hmm. understanding of it. So uh, your poem, Sacred Phoenix Heart says, under the cover of blood, love veils many rose gardens. In total faith, love tenderly guides every lover to the garden of the heart. Reason says, the world is limited in six directions. There's no way out. Love says, there is a way, and I have traveled it many times. There's a lot of um, commentary that goes with these that I'll uh, try to sprinkle in as we get into our stretches. But uh, yeah, a lot of Rumi, a lot of these Rumi poems have that flavor of go beyond the analytical judging mind to the heart space. Um, and that's, in this case, the answer or the path beyond uh, limitation, beyond what reason tells us we, we can only do this, we can only do that. And love, you know, that's an experience beyond the, the pros and cons, beyond like judgments and thinking, you know, I should do this, I should do that. Sometimes it's just the heart guides us into, and yeah, that's, that's an important thing for us to do um, because there's, you know, we're already trained so much in the mind. We go through so much schooling and the jobs and everything is mind, mind, mind. But uh, so we'll, we'll get a chance to, to go into the heart space and kind of set the mind aside and just feel and love. That's gratitude, compassion, all those wonderful things. So this projection of light streaming out. I, I'm, I'm trying to sort of interpret that, but it seems like, like a projection from their hearts, the courage of your love. Um, Osho, uh, another one of my favorite teachers, has books about a book called Courage and a book called Love, Freedom, and Aloneness. And uh, this is like that conception that everything that we think, everything that we do comes from either love or fear. It's like light and dark. And, you know, yin and yang, they're, they're both necessary. They need to be in balance. Um, but courage is a form of love because courage is the opposite of fear and love is the opposite of fear. So trust, courage. Uh, it's also said that courage mean, doesn't mean not being afraid. It means feeling fear, but like getting beyond it, like doing what is, needs to be done um, courageously despite the fear. So your poem says, Again, love is without reason. Rationality is like a cane. Judgment needs a cane because it is blind. When love arrives, thought dies in its shadow. Love is the sunrise, while thought is only a flashing light. All right, then, if you have a little cushion to sit on, roll the blanket, cushion nice to elevate the sitting bones sometimes we'll we'll pad over the mat with like a blanket um, so if you sit up on your cushion then let your knees drop down almost like you're sliding off the cushion a little bit so that you're naturally tilted slightly forwards this will give you a comfortable tall spine Lifting up the heart, we'll start to roll the shoulders back, just gently loosening and sometimes with those little crunchy pops and things. But this will allow you to just let the shoulders relax, melting all the way down your back. You can choose a position for your hands, uh, palms up or down on your knees, whatever is more comfortable. And then once you feel your sitting bones, like leaning back slightly, so you've got a tall spine, find your sitting bones, pouring your weight into those points at the base of the pelvis, the base of the spine, and finding 
stability, stillness. Then tapping into your breath, relaxed belly. So the belly fills up like a balloon with your inhales. Feel where the breath enters your nostrils, fills up the belly. And as you gently deepen the breath, fills up the belly and then up into your heart and your upper lungs. Relaxing the face with the eyes rolling up to the third eye point between your eyebrows. Relaxed forehead, jaw, just gazing into that space. Softening and breathing. Meditation is the moments when the mind is still and quiet. So your mind may give you a thought. It may come from negative mind, positive mind, or neutral mind. And we're not chastising the mind. It's not like, shut up mind with your thoughts. Just recognizing with gratitude, okay, there's the mind, but you are beyond the mind. Our true identity is consciousness and spirit. So allowing those moments when there's no thought. It doesn't have to be five, 10 minutes straight of meditation. It comes in a second or two and it builds up like drops in a barrel. Every moment when you're still and quiet gives you extra peace, rejuvenation. Sometimes when you're holding the breath, when there's a little pause, at the top of the inhale, at the bottom of the exhale. Two forms of meditation are concentration and awareness. So concentrating on your breath, that's one point of attention, that's a form of meditation. The awareness, just your general awareness, your body, mm -hmm your sounds you can hear around you. All this is part of your experience. So just welcoming everything you're aware of without judgment or without trying to change anything. We'll take one more deep inhale. Hold this breath. No tension in the body or the face as you hold just to feel the stillness. And then exhale it out. Join the palms and rub a little bit, stimulate a little energy, and releasing the hands, bring your left hand over your heart center, right hand over your navel center. Feel the belly and the heart expanding with the inhales. And this is a very intimate kind of mudra, like you're holding yourself, holding your heart, your body, the navel point, the third chakra is where the ego is, where our willpower, our fire, our sense of self. A lot of times people think ego is a bad thing. They say, oh, you have an ego. and We all have an ego. That's what tells you who you are. And we're all beautiful, divine souls. We're all equal, worthy so feel that energy under your right hand and feel under your left hand, the heart, whatever emotion you're feeling right now. Sometimes we get this seasonal affected, you know, depressive kind of feelings around the dark times. And that's okay. We're just acknowledging that, feeling it so that you can release it. Take one more deep inhale. Hold the breath and hold yourself with love, with acceptance. And exhale. And joining the palms back together at the heart center. Thumbs press gently to the heart. And let's do some stress relief breath. In through the nose and sigh out the mouth. And a couple more. Deep inhale, filling up the belly and the heart. 
then sigh it all out. One more full inhale and sigh. When breathing normally, just notice how you feel. This mudra bringing balance between the two hemispheres of your brain, the left and right, masculine and feminine energies of the body. And today we'll tune in with three sounds of OM, which starts with the sound AH when the mouth is wide open. And it, as you close the mouth, it naturally goes AH, oh, mm. And we meditate on that vibration. It's the vibration of life, of the universe. So let's take a deep breath. One more sigh breath. And inhale deeply for OM. Feel the subtle vibrations as we exhale release the palms as you inhale stretch the arms out and up until the palms come together as you exhale come down through the center and take a few more with deep breath all the way up complete exhales all the way down feeling your body, feeling the space around your body. Warming those shoulders a little bit, clearing the electromagnetic field, the aura around us, gathering energy. Let's do one more and hold at the top and stretch tall, sitting bones to fingertips. Inhale a little more, stretch all the way up like an antenna connecting to the universal energy. And to the third eye with your exhale, thumbs between the eyebrows, blessing that higher consciousness down through the heart and release and relax. There's no rush, just being still and always feeling your energy. It's like uh, stopping to smell the roses. And next we'll stretch the legs out straight with the palms pressed down beside your hips, down into the mat, and bouncing the knees alternately or loosening the legs. And you can push into your hands and lean forward keeping a tall spine, keeping the heart lifted, but leaning forward as much as you like. Um, everything that we do, you know, it's listening to your body and, you know, if you want to go deeper, if you want more stretch, that's always an option, or you can stay where you are. Of course, if uh, anything is shooting pains or anything, then you would back off, you know listening to your body. I'm going to keep on bouncing the knees and go a little deeper because I'm loving that opening behind the legs. This will be good for our knees, that whole sciatic nerve. So this will actually take some of the tension off the low back where some of these sciatic nerves and muscles run and connect into the low back from behind the legs. And then taking our palms like light fists and kind of massaging, like 
tenderizing, you might say, through the leg muscles, percussive motions. This is good for those hips. When I get the, the soreness in the outer hips and the uh, TFLs and hip stabilizers, get this a little bit. We're just waking up the, all the leg muscles. Quads and calves. Get the inner leg muscles. And rub the knees gently, just kind of warming and loosening the kneecaps. And up into the upper body. Some massage for the ribs and that stimulation for all the organs. <clears throat> This is our immune boost to the uh, thymus, thyroid. <clears throat> Clears the, the mucus from the lungs. And after you get all the, the front of the torso, you work your way around to the low back. Take from adrenals and kidneys. And for the facial muscles, push the eyebrows from the nose upwards all the way up through the forehead and massage the jaw, kind of uh, jaw joint jaw muscles. You can stretch your mouth wide open, even stretching the tongue out. We have to stretch our tongues to like lion face. <laughs> it's really good. I watched this whole um, video, this Ayurveda, it's an Indian Ayurveda teacher, and she was talking about how your tongue uh, relates to different parts of the body. Um, so stretching the tongue helps with a bunch of other things. So, yeah, stretch the jaw and mouth and tongue. And massage all through the eyebrows. This is a great stress relief massage because we store mental tension through the eyebrows, through all the facial muscles, clearing the sinuses. Also underneath the eyes, you can clear those sinuses all the way out to the ears, down the back of the neck. Get everything drained and cleared. And yeah, running the fingers from behind your, your head down the neck muscles, down to the shoulders. You can squeeze your traps, maybe uh, those outer shoulders, the people who get the sh outer shoulder tension, you can squeeze and clear through your arms. For your fingers, stretch and close and with a palm flat, like fingers coming up, then you can gently drop back as well as with the fingers down, drawing gently towards your body for our wrists. The other one is palm facing up, like thumb outward, like so. And I'm drawing this thumb like a an outward kind of, I guess what you would call an external rotation. And just shake that out. And you got your other hand, fingers up, come back gently. And fingers down, coming towards you. And then palm up, drawing the thumb towards your body. And shake it out. And lastly, we'll do a little tune up for the foot muscles. So I'm gonna squeeze all through the sole of the foot with both hands all the way around the back of the heel. This is our like reflexology, another uh, microcosm 
of the body. And so all these points that help stimulate all the different organs and parts of the body. And same thing with the toes, you can point them up and draw them back towards you. And you can point them down, get a little stretch that way. Just pressing all the way up into the sole, the center, get all those foot muscles. And then when you're ready for the other foot, same thing, just kind of squeezing, warming it up. And toes up, come back towards us. And the toes down, squeezing. The other type of foot massage is this like side up and down kind of twisting kind of thing. All right. And can let that go. Uh, let's do a little yin. That was a lot of movement. <laughs> so let's do a long yin stretch. I'm going to take my bolster. Not totally necessary, but if you have a cushion or a pillow, uh, bring the soles of the feet together. Bounce the knees a little bit. Just kind of waking up the inner flexors. And the cushion comes right up to your body. If you have another little blanket or something that's nice under the head, then you just roll back. And this bolster is going to help with heart opening. And then rolling the shoulders all the way under your body so the heart is nice and open. The shoulders are dropping down. Got palms facing up. Next, like a, maybe about a foot away from the body in a comfortable spot. If your hips are hurting, you can bring the feet further away from your body to uh, reduce that stretch, or you can uh, put some little props under the knees. And this will be our first yin stretch. So I want to give you three minutes here. Relaxing from head to toe, starting with your head and letting the head and neck sink, supported. The face relaxing will help you relax the mind. So soften all through the face and jaw. And tapping into your breath, feel it expanding through the lungs and the heart. And with the exhales, you let go of the breath and you feel that just softening like the shoulders sinking. This will be nice for your low back to be supported and it's really healing for the spine, low back and shoulders, and a little hip stretch too. might feel some subtle tension in the hips. So just continue to consciously soften the body, especially with those exhales.
take a couple more breaths here. There's never any rush, but it's when you feel ready to transition, you start to roll off the support to your right side, resting your head on that right arm in the fetal position. And then mindfully move any props out of the way so that you can lie flat on your back, hugging the knees in towards the chest. And rotating the knees to massage that low back. Still breathing as much as you can. Remember to have that long, deep breath that will keep you in a calm and anti-inflammatory kind of state. And then reverse the direction of your circles. Enjoy that low back massage. And then we're going to start to circle both knees in opposite directions. So opening the knees in big circles. So we're working those hips a little more. Then reverse those circles. for a couple more breaths. And coming to stillness, hug both the knees together and to the chest. And we're gonna start to guide the knees down to the right side, keeping both of the shoulders down in this reclined spinal twist. And we're going to also create a leg stretch by stretching, straightening that top left leg until it's pretty straight. And you kind of draw it up towards your body until you feel a nice stretch behind that left leg. Keep rounding the shoulders down. And we'll turn the head the opposite way to the left. Just relaxing. I'm going to breathe here for a minute in your twist. So this is another really nice one for the low back. And we're wringing out all the torso organs like a, wringing out a towel, so detoxifying. Still trying to create some decently deep breath, despite the belly may feel a little twisted. And the whole body is relaxed. Never want to have any part of the body like floating up in the air, just grounding down. Now, we're going to start our arm circles. So bring that left arm across. The right arm is kind of just flat um, down. And bring that left arm across to meet the right. And keeping the right, uh, sorry, the left fingers, fingertips on the ground, you start to make this big arc up over the head out to straight on the left side, and then it comes back, running along the ground, arcing up overhead, back to meet the right. Try that a few times, inhaling as you make that big arc. Feel that in your uh, armpit muscles, <laughs> the uh, chest or 
delt, pec kind of area, working through all the range of the shoulder. And just a, a few more. Inhaling as you arc open. Exhaling as it comes back to meet the other hand. Always mindfully moving. After you finish this last part, I'm gonna gently bring the knees back up and give them a hug, squeezing into the center. And circle those knees a little bit. More back massage. And we're getting ready for the other side. We start to guide the knees down to the Left side, both shoulders ground down into your mat. And we straighten that top right leg, bringing it to a point over on the left side where you feel a stretch behind the leg. I like to keep uh, the closest hand, like the left hand in this case, grounding that leg down just in case it is trying to grasp. All right. Once you feel a good stretch there, you get a minute to relax. Also, the head goes opposite way to the right. So you get a little neck stretch here as well. Feel the belly expanding with the inhales and a little bit twisted up, but that's good. That's massaging of the organs, unless you have a big full belly, which is not usually recommended before yoga, but breathe into it with a neutral mind, no judgment. After this breath, we we'll start to do our arm circles. We bring that right hand across to meet the left. Right fingers along the floor, tracing up over the head. The big circle as it comes outwards. And inhale, and with the exhale, it comes back along the floor, back to meet the left. Inhale as you open up and slowly move through the range of the shoulder. Exhaling when you come back to the other hand. We'll do this about six or seven times. And as you finish that last round, we'll start to float the knees back up and give them a squeeze in towards your chest. And one more circling of the knees a few times one way. 
and a few times the other way. And we're going to start to work our way back to seated. So usually we rock along the whole length of the spine. But if that doesn't feel good for you, you can just gently roll to one side and come up in your own way. But you can get a full back massage up and down the spine if that feels good for you. When you're ready to come up, you can support under your sitting bones into a comfortable cross-legged posture. And yeah, let's roll the shoulders back. And right, do a little side bend. So it doesn't matter which way you go, but got the bottom arm straight for stability and top arm in line with the torso. Both hips, both sitting bones ground down. In case that hip is popping up, just stay grounded. Just a few deep breaths here. You can choose the position for your head. Um, if your neck is uncomfortable, always just relax it down. Up is a little more energizing. That's the exaltation gaze. Or in the middle, <laughs> wherever it's comfortable. And we're going to do a few circles with this top arm, exhaling mindfully down and inhaling up. Continuous long breath, controlling the release of the breath. So, like when we do those sigh breaths, you can do that throat constriction, which is called ujjayi, to help to slow the breath. Even if you breathe through the nose, you can still use that feeling of sighing, of throat constriction, which will slow just to help you regulate the breath and that'll calm the emotions in the vagus nerve. On an inhale, we'll stretch up. Exhale, gradually moving into the other side. We got both sitting bones grounding down, top arm in line with the torso. I'm just breathing a few Deep breaths through the ribs. Feel that shoulder and rib stretch. Circle that top arm, exhaling through the downward motion, inhaling all the way through the upward arc. This is the circle, which is the divine feminine, the yoni circle. No sharp edges, it is an open vessel. Mm -hmm. This big full moon that we've had. It's been kind of intense. It's in the mode of prosperity, in the house of restoring prosperity. And one more inhale, stretch up, palms together. With the exhale, blessing through the third eye and the heart. And release and just relax and be still. Breathe and feel your body, feel your mind and heart. We we'll do a little bit of eagle arms or another shoulder stretch. So bringing the right arm to the center of the body in front of the face. Left arm along your chest goes as far as you can. If you can get elbow past the elbow, 
get a good stretch. And if you can hook a finger or two, or as long as you have a little grip here, that's all you need. I'm just gonna breathe here. The deeper the breath, the more opening that you'll feel in the upper back and shoulders. And if you want to increase the sensation, you can gradually lift just a tad higher with the arms. We're going to do um, a few more breaths if you want to lift up a little higher. Did you? Uh... One more breath. And when you exhale, you release the arms, go wide with your wings, and then relax. Just relax and breathe. the other side, that left arm comes in front of your face in the central line of the body. Right arm, as far as you can, past the elbow, and then it comes up, Look a finger or a palm, and we breathe. We're doing about a minute. So, it starts to, starts to generate some heat. It starts to get a little challenging after a few breaths, so. You know, if it starts to hurt or something, you can always let it go. But uh, depth of the breath you can use to increase the stretch, or you can go higher. Got about 30 more seconds in our eagle arms. You want to go higher and Sean, yeah, yeah, you can, there you go. So if you feel okay, you can maybe go just a centimeter or two higher. We're going to take our last breath. With the exhale, unwind, spread your wings, open the heart, and relax and just breathe, meditating here. Roll those shoulders back a little bit. I don't think our shoulders can get a break now. We'll go, um, yeah, let's do our windshield wipers. Uh, so, Leaning back, bring your hands, palms down behind you, leaning back into the hands, and we bring the feet flat, like a couple feet apart. And then you can start to lower the knees to either side. So I'll massage all through the hips and glutes. Don't forget about the breath. You may uh, want to coordinate the breath with the movement where you like exhale to each side. Or you can do an inhale to one side, and exhale to the other side, that'll work too. All right. 
right. That's good. Let's do a brief little bit of uh, the deer pose. So if you bring the knees down to the right side and turn your torso towards the right knee, uh, you can increase the stretch by stretching your back leg back further or the leg forward more. It's like you're going towards this uh, right angle, both legs. Twisting towards that right side. This is where we're going to start to extend out and come down. Resting your head on something, you can make a pillow from your hands or use a little prop to rest. Just finding a comfy spot and we'll just relax here for a minute or so. Maybe feeling that uh, kind of outer hip stretch through the right. Glutes. This point, we'll start to start to walk ourselves back up. And then you bring the hands back behind you, so you can lean back into the hands. Or the other side, and coming down to the left side. I'm going to kick this right leg back, but this is all just according to your preference. Find that angle where you can feel a good stretch. And then we're coming down over the, twisting towards that left knee, right over that left knee. Okay. good. The deer pose. So this is like when we start like this, and then going to the left side now and coming down over that left knee. Always want to relax your head on something so you're Neck and face can relax. Feel your breathing. Every exhale is an opportunity to let go as we release the breath and at the same time release the body, all the muscles, the face and jaw like to hold tension, shoulders, Kind of scanning over the body and softening everything. Finishing this last breath. When you're ready to transition, just start to press into the hands and bring yourself back up. And I'm just going to bring this uh, right foot back to meet the left, bounce the knees a little bit more. Let's do a brief little uh, Baddha Konasana here. So we'll do one more stretch for the hips. Um, the, uh, I don't want to say the goal, it's not really goal oriented, but the uh, intention here is to uh, get down. So like if your hips are, um, we're bringing the feet further away from the body than you normally would in a Baddha so that you can get deeper down. 
And if you have um, some cushion to bring over your legs, you know, kind of over your knees, that'll help you opening up here. So, you know, if you're in a regular Vatikanasana with the feet way up here, a lot of people can only, you know, go so far. And it doesn't matter how far down you go, but we're going for ease here. So bringing the feet further away and some support here so you can rest over that and just get a nice extended spine, a nice spot to rest your head. I'm just going to hang out here for a minute. Feeling the breath. Expansion in the belly that's going to open up your hips through the pelvis, through the low back expanding, and relaxing everything with the exhales, the face, the jaw, the shoulders, the head, neck. At this point, if you want to remove your props, now that your, your hips, your spine are looser, you may be able to go further down and take a few more breaths here. In this style of yoga, like yin yoga, we're not really pulling or striving towards any goal, so... You don't have to pull yourself down, but allowing yourself to naturally deepen with the exhales, the navel draws in and all the breath is expelled. It'll naturally make room to get a little deeper. Just so you can get that nice decompression of the low back and the hips. One more breath, a complete exhale down deep. And start to roll up with the head coming up last. Just tuck your legs back into a comfortable cross-legged easy pose or half lotus if you like. Getting set for our meditation. If you <laughs> haven't already propped under your sitting bones, get a a comfortable seat. Now roll the shoulders back. We got heart lifted, tall posture, shoulders relaxed down the back. And we're going to do a, a little meditation, which is for prosperity, uh, but it's just very stress relieving. And a lot of people are feeling the stress. So this is breathing through your lips on the inhale and the exhale. It's like, there's a little hole in the lips. So it's a long inhale through the little hole in the lips. And a long exhale. In the mudra, you bring the index finger, what we call the Jupiter finger, extended up. The um, hands are kind of the level of your shoulders near your shoulders, so elbows relax comfortably down by the ribs, shoulders relax, everything's relaxed. But the Jupiter, which is the finger of abundance and expansion, wisdom, is pointed up towards the heavens. 
So we're, we're calling in our prosperity, abundance consciousness, which is that we are already abundant. And we're claiming that, we're allowing that, drawing that to us. Long, deep breath in and out through the lips, beginning. And keep the eyes closed with the eyes rolled up towards the third eye point between your eyebrows. That'll keep the eyes and keeping the eyes still keeps the mind still. it up one more minute stay focused on your breath listen to your breath nothing else One more deep inhale in, drink in the breath. Hold, no tension as you hold, enjoy the stillness. Blow the breath out. As you relax the mudra, relaxing the hands down, breathing naturally through your nose. Now is time for final relaxation. So very gently, you can come to lie on your back. You could also do legs up the wall, or you can lay over some support like we did earlier. You can support under your 
back, your knees or your head. You can put some layers on if you like to seal in the warmth. Get comfy. When you're on your back, it's always nice for the shoulders if you roll shoulder blades underneath your body. It usually palms face up. And relaxing the face, forehead and jaw soft even if your mouth opens up. That's better than having jaw tension. And also relaxing your belly, abdominals, shoulders down through the arms and fingers, soft, through the torso, belly, through the leg muscles, into the ankles and the feet just flop open naturally. Each little toe, the entire body, shimmering field, radiant, relaxing awareness.
vision, the light of the sun, and a little relaxing the entire body, face, mind, relaxed. The roomy interpretation, sacred phoenix heart, Alana Fairchild, her channeling here, she said, how I adore your defiant, rebellious heart. It knows that what for the mind is an end is for the heart simply another match to ignite the sacred flames. It eats of love until it is filled and then becomes hungry again and eats some more. And again and again. It eats of love until it is so full it must simply explode into a sacred fire of passion. It bursts incapable of sustaining old consciousness in the expanse of blessings unlimited, lavished upon it through the great beloved's affection. It would be like attempting to fit an ocean in a teacup. So it does not. It bursts forth like a dying star into spectacular radiance, only to be reborn again, new and hungry for the next feeding frenzy in love's great banquet. How I adore your defiant, spectacular heart. It's what it's all about. Love is life. Love is truth, light. Darkness is there but it doesn't really exist. It's just a lack of light. Light really exists. Love really exists. It's what makes everything. And everything else is just everything else. <laughs> so you can deepen your breath and bring in some energy, give yourself some self-love, a pat on the back for completing your practice tonight. Inviting some little movements to the fingers, wrists, and ankles. Give your arms a stretch. Stretch the arms and the legs and take an inhale and sigh it out. And rub the palms together and stimulate some energy. Rub the soles of your feet together. And you can either rock and roll along your back, or if you're on a props, rolling to the side. But taking your time, eventually, uh, we'll come seated. And we'll bring the palms together, get a little more energy stimulation. We'll bring this energy to the heart, thumbs connecting to the heart center. And we close class with one sound of Om and three sounds of Shanti. So we're tuning, harmonizing with the universal vibration and sending peace, 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 Shanti, Shanti, Shanti into the universal field for yourself, to all beings, anyone who needs it, who comes to mind, we send it to them. Peace to all beings. Inhale. Oh. <laughs> May all beings have peace. May all beings everywhere be free from suffering. May all beings dwell in equanimity, in love, healing, peace, compassion. And although we're in this world to accomplish our, our goals, our lessons, to burn up our karma, to serve our purposes, learn our lessons, may we do that 
in the most comfortable way and help others to do so as well. The light and love within me honors that within each of you. Namaste.